So we'll start here with the mast laid on the boat. And then with it in this position, with all the rigging untaped, we'll just work our way down the shrouds, making sure they're not tangled or twisted in any of the other rigging. And we can then attach them using the clevis pin. Once we've done that on both sides, it's essential to make sure that all the shackles where the rigging attaches at the hounds is tight. And then a good idea is to put some tape on that to make sure that your spinnaker cannot get caught up there. There she is. Now we go take the spinnaker halyard. And we're going to thread it behind the shroud, through the middle of the spreaders, and then down through the cleat on the mast there. And then at the top, through the block. And then again, we'll just take that end. That will be the end that we attach to the spinnaker. So here we are with the chain plate for the forestay. A very good idea is to leave the clevis pin where you had it when you de-rigged the boat. That way, you won't have to measure the mast rake again when you've got the mast up so you'll know exactly where to put it so then the bridle wires we just attach these to the bow tangs of the boat clevis pin going down so in the event of your split ring coming out the pin is less likely to drop out of the boat so we can then put the base of the mast on the mast step ball and here you can just see the procedure for lifting the mast with three people very important, the guy at the bottom of the mast has to apply plenty of downward pressure on the mast step ball because these mast step balls have been known to jump off and if you're not applying the correct amount of pressure there, it could jump off. So here we're just, uh, then with the mast up, we're going to take the forestay, making sure that it's not twisted around anything and we're just going to attach it to that clevis pin in the chain plate exactly where we'd left it from when we de-rigged the boat before. So here we have how we've left the trapeze system from when we took the boat apart, basically unshackling the trapeze system from the trapeze wires. It just makes it a bit more straightforward when you come to re-rig the boat, less likely to have twisted wires. So then we'll just attach the trapeze wires using the shackles and of course, we're going to tighten those up using the pliers to make sure that your crew doesn't get dropped in the water. Now the spinnaker halyard, we're just going to thread through the cleat. Again, looking up the mast, making sure that it's not twisted at all. And then from the cleat, there should be a small block on the front beam. This is very handy for uncleating uh, spinnaker halyard. And then down through some sort of takeaway system using bungee and then through the pulley on the trampoline and then down through the trampoline this will become the retrieval line. So there we are just pulling that through. Lovely. Now we've got some sort of takeaway system for the downhaul here. Uh, we're doing it in a very simple manner where we're just going to attach the downhaul to the jib takeaway system. It's a very quick way of doing this and it means you only have one takeaway system for both the jib and the downhaul. If you're going to do it more professionally you could have a separate takeaway system for the jib and the downhaul which would be a bit tidier meaning that both ropes will have the correct amount of tension on them. But we do have to take the downhaul system off if we are going to remove the mast from the boat. And there it is getting sucked in to the beam, keeping our ropes tidy. And just threading the jib Cunningham system up through the block there, and then up to the block, just between where the bridle wires attach, and that's ready to go. So now we're going to attach the bow sprit. We'll start off by attaching 
the end of the spinnaker pole or bow sprit to the front beam. Having done so, I'm just going to loosely tie the bow sprit up. This will make it easier to attach the pole bridles to the boat. Here's the pole bridle. I'm just going on to the bow tang there. And then the intermediate pole bridles. On here we've got them so that they're adjustable tension. What we need to make sure is that the tension is even on these ropes, which we'll come on to shortly. Otherwise you'll have a sideways bend in the middle of your pole. So this is the arrangement of the bow tang, how it should look afterwards, and the other side with the jib Cunningham block as well. And there's the attachment point onto the front beam. Before we can put the tension on the spinnaker pole and on those intermediate bridles, we're gonna to have to put the rig tension on the boat. If you've left the boat so that one of the chain plate stay adjusters is on the top hole and the other is in the correct position, then this should be easy. You just have to match the two chain plates up so that they're both in the same hole. If not, you'll have a bit of a trial and error kind of process to get the tension on there. We'll look a bit more at tension later. So here we are just tensioning the spinnaker pole. Very simply using the rope here. Uh, you might have a set length stainless rod which just pins onto the pole. If you have then very well done. Your medal is in the post. But here we are with the rope. We're just going through and we're just going to pull tension on there to the pole to put a slight bend in the pole. By putting a slight bend in the pole, it reduces the risk of breaking that pole. Then the intermediate bridles, we're just gonna to want to pull those on so they're both very tight, basically eliminating any movement that can take place from the pole. Gonna to have to keep looking down the pole to make sure that the tension is even between those intermediate bridles. Once that's done, we can tension the sock. The sock does need to be tight. The tighter it is, the less friction there'll be when hoisting or recovering the spinnaker. So here we're just gonna th thread the retrieval line. So we have to go through the small hole in the end. This will stop the spinnaker from coming out too far. And then we're gonna use the tiller extension, just a clove hitch around the end. A bit like fishing, we're just reeling her in pulling her out, make sure you don't let go because it will disappear back into the chute, meaning you'll have to do it again. And then we're just gonna tie it off here around the bowsprit, ready to rig the spinnaker. Incidentally, another film coming soon, rigging your spinnaker. So here we are with the downhaul and the gooseneck, just taking off some old tape there. So we wanna make sure that the boom goes onto the gooseneck between the downhaul lines rather than through them. Very straightforward there, we're just going to pin that on. Very good idea with that pin to make sure you do tape that up well because the downhaul ropes do run up against that split ring. So with a bit of tape on there means that split ring is not going to get caught. And then the mast rotation control, very very simple here. We're just going to tie that on to the spanner bar.